Hello. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the low frequency response of transistor amplifiers. In order to do that, I have redrawn uh, the frequency response of an amplifier, the, the frequency response um, of the gain, specifically the, the magnitude response. Uh, and so you can see I have replotted um, the magnitude of my gain in dBs which is calculated as 20 times the log base 10 of the actual gain in linear scale. Uh, and we have talked about how the um, magnitude response of an amplifier resembles that of a bandpass filter, where we have a low cutoff frequency and a high cutoff frequency. And the bandwidth is the difference between the two, FH minus FL. Uh, the region in between the low and high cutoff frequencies is referred to as the midband region. It is the region in which the amplifier uh, is operating with its maximum gain. Typically, we have made assumptions when we have uh, designed or analyzed amplifiers in the past. We have made the assumption that the amplifier was operating in the midband region when we were calculating gains and input resistances and output resistances. We were making that assumption by assuming that uh, the coupling and bypass capacitors were short circuits and by ignoring any um, input capacitances of the transistor, load capacitances, etc. Now, the low and uh, high cutoff frequencies are defined as the uh, minus 3 dB point I labeled here. And uh, notice that, you know, they are the points at which the midband gain um, drops by 3 dBs with respect to um, the, the value in the midband region. Uh, sometimes the students get confused and they um, interpret that as being, oh, the uh, low cutoff frequency and the high cutoff frequency are those frequencies at which the gain of the amplifier is equal to negative 3 dB. That's not the case. Let's say that the, the gain in the midband region is 10 dBs, then the high and low, cut, uh, and low cutoff frequencies will be defined as the frequencies at which the gain drops by 3 dBs with respect to that 10 dB value. So it will be um, the value of the gain at the FL and FH points will be, in that case, 10 minus 3 dBs will be 7 dBs. So make sure that you um, avoid that mistake. Now, we had mentioned also that the, um, the low cutoff frequency was due to coupling and bypass capacitors. And that's the effect that we're going to be focusing on in, that, in this video. Uh, notice that the coupling and bypass capacitors are producing a response that is a high, um, um, high pass type of response, meaning the gain drops for frequencies below FL, and then it reaches a maximum value and remains practically constant for frequencies beyond FL. The reason for this is... If we draw um, an amplifier, so I'm going to write here low frequency response. So if I have my generic amplifier, with some gain A, uh, now I have connected, if you remember, I have fed my input and output signals via coupling capacitors. Typically have referred to them as CC1 and CC2. Now my input signal typically is coming from a signal source, which may have a series resistance, which I'm going to represent as R sub S. That will be the series resistance of the signal source. In most of our examples, we have um, ignored it. We have assumed for it to be zero, but uh, we will see that when we're dealing with frequency response, um, that may be an assumption that we may not be able to make. So this will be V sub S. Um, and likewise, at the output, I'll be connected to a load resistor, typically. Or another stage, which I can uh, model as an input resistance uh, connected at, as a load resistance. I'm going to further model my amplifier as having a input resistance R in. This will be the input resistance of my amplifier. And then an output resistance are out. 
And we can see that uh, these capacitors, CC1 and CC2, they form high-pass filters with the resistance that is connected um, across their terminals, the thevenin resistance. Now, um, if that's the case, each capacitor is going to introduce a cutoff frequency of value. So, each cap introduces a cutoff frequency. Fc being equal to 1 divided by 2 pi, and I wrote R7 in times C. Uh, R7 in will be the 7 in resistance or the equivalent resistance seen across the terminals of the capacitor. Uh, in the case of this circuit, if we wanted to calculate the cutoff frequencies introduced by CC1 and CC2, uh, we can just calculate each one of them independently. So, for example, in this case, the cutoff frequency introduced by CC1, I'm going to refer to it as um, FC1. It will be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi. And now, what's the 7 in resistance seen across the terminal of capacitor CC1? In order to calculate that, I'm going to turn off my signal source. Uh, so I'm going to replace it just mentally with a short to ground, and so I can see that I will have the following, CC1, RS to ground, and R in to ground. Um, and we can see that then we have the equivalent resistance seen by the terminus of the capacitor is equal to the series combination of RS and R in. Uh, that may not be as clear, since I have split those grounds, but if you think of them as the same, electrically the same terminal, this is what we will have. And so this will be Rs plus the input resistance of the amplifier times CC1. Likewise, I can calculate the, um, the frequency of the pole introduced by CC2 as 1 divided by 2 pi. And now again, I have to consider the 7 in resistance uh, seen across capacitor CC2, which is going to be RL on this side, and then on this side it's going to be R out. If I have turned off all my um, independent voltage sources, uh, then my PIN will be zero, so this will also be a short to ground. And since I have ground on both sides, I'm going to join them just so that we can see that the 7 in resistance will actually be the series resistance um, or, or the series combination of R out and RL. So this will be R out plus RL. That will be the overall resistance seen across the terminals of CC2 times the capacitance CC2. Um, now, the approach that we are going to take to calculate um, the low frequency uh, the low cut of frequency is that we're going to calculate the contributions of each capacitor independently, much in the same fashion as I have done it over here, where I calculated uh, the cut of frequency due to capacitor CC1 independent of the cut of frequency due to capacitor CC2. So when I'm calculating the cut of frequency due to CC1, I'm going to assume that any other capacitors in the circuit are shorted, uh, meaning I'm ignoring them. And when I am considering uh, the cutoff frequency due to CC2, I'm going to um, only consider CC2 and short all other coupling and bypass capacitors in my circuit. That's going to give me a series of, um, of frequencies, which are the frequencies of the poles introduced by each one of those capacitors independently. I'm going to consider that the largest one is going to be my dominant cutoff frequency. How does that work? So first of all, let me write down the technique here. So my analysis technique is going to be um, calculate cut of frequency for each cap independently. And for that, I'm going to assume that um, all other capacitors are short circuits. Uh, 
Um, and then I'm going to um, assume or conclude that the largest one of the individual cutoff frequencies will be dominant. Is the dominant cutoff frequency sometimes also referred to as the dominant pole? And perhaps this is easier to see uh, in a graphical representation. I'll try to represent that graphically right here. Let's imagine that I have my frequency response, and let's say I have the same plot as at the top, uh, but I am zooming in. Um, to my uh, low low pass region here. So here is the beginning of my mid band, and let's say that I have uh, three poles. I have I've calculated my cutoff frequencies. In this case, I will have uh, C one and C two. Uh, for the coupling capacitors, there's also going to be one introduced by the bypass capacitor if we are doing let's say a common emitter uh, with a bypass capacitor in the emitter. So let's imagine that I have a situation where I have three cutoff frequencies. And so I will have, let's say, you know, FL1, FL2, and FL3. What's going to happen is something as follows. Um, my gain is going to, when it reaches uh, the first pole, FL3, it's going to start decreasing at the rate of negative 20 dB per decade. Then once it reaches FL2, it's going to uh, increase that rate to negative 40 dB per decade. And then finally, when it reaches FL1, it's going to increase at the rate of or decrease at the rate of negative 60 dB per decade. And again, that's just the piecewise linear approximation. This is actually going to be a much smoother um, decrease there. But you get the picture. Um, and as we can see, the low cutoff frequency for the overall circuit, we can approximate as uh, the value of FL3, the highest of those cutoff frequencies um, produced by each capacitor individually. That's the one that's going to dominate, especially if it is much larger than the others, uh, which we will see will be um, the case in certain circuits. Therefore, we can say um, if FL3 much larger than FL2 and FL1, then the overall FL for the circuit, the overall low cutoff frequency, we can approximate as FL3. And that approximation is going to uh, be most accurate, again, if the highest of those low cutoff frequencies um, is very distant from the other two, if they're all very close together, we're going to see um, uh, you know, more of an interaction between the three, and so our cutoff frequency will be um, slightly higher. But Normally, we're just going to be using this approximation. Uh, now, just a quick uh, design note. So this is in the case that we are calculating uh, or analyzing a circuit to figure out the value of the low cutoff frequency. What if we are designing a circuit and we want to select the value of the cutoff frequency? Well, typically, as a rule of thumb, so I'll write here, design rule of thumb, Uh, we're going to choose um, coupling and bypass capacitor values so that my dominant cutoff frequency is going to be approximately equal to 0.8 times the nominal cutoff frequency that I actually want for my circuit. Uh, that's a pretty good rule of thumb um, in order not to uh, filter uh, signals within the frequency range of interest. And so I'm going to assume... Um, Choose capacitor values 
So that dominant cutoff frequency is approximately 0.8 times the nominal value that I want for my FL. Um, and then I want, in order for my approximation to be more accurate, I want my other uh, low cutoff frequencies to be far away or, you know, to be much smaller. And so, and around 0.1 FL nominal for other um, cutoff frequencies.